Hey Star Wars fans, Budget Jedi here. Hope you're well. Uh, you're looking at a latex uh, hand puppet of a space slug. This is very cool. I got this online uh, at the Disney store. Originally it was 15 bucks, but they were having a sale where I guess it was $10 shipped. But it's a very cool piece. Uh, I've never really seen any space slug uh, collectible before. Uh, and so I thought I might try to use this one to make an actual space slug diorama. So when I was growing up and I saw Star Wars for the first time, the space slug scene was definitely one of the most memorable for me. And that's really why I'm trying to do this. And if you remember, uh, most of the scene was really the plain rocks on the bottom as well as kind of like in the back as a wall. So in concept, uh, this diorama doesn't have that many elements to it. And as usual, it would be a really great opportunity for me to use up all of my leftover um, insulation and styrofoam material. Alright, so my first order of business uh, is to make this puppet somehow rigid. And so as you can see, I've got some uh, packing peanuts here. Uh, I guess you could use uh, paper or any kind of stuffing material. And I've uh, stuffed a little bit of peanuts to make the head at least somewhat rigid, somewhat like not flat. And then um, I do need a, a, to find a way to make this rigid, especially in this shape. So I was thinking, like I have a couple of things here that I can use. I have this like coffee cup. I also have this... Uh, Chinese food container. I call this Chinese food container because every time I order some uh, hot and sour soup from my local store, I get this. So, um, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? I can do this. That will hold it up pretty well, I think. But it's kind of loose. Let's try this. Okay, this, this is a lot better, but I think it's too tight it's taking me all right I guess this one is good enough I've put my peanuts in there and I've really packed it in I think he's ready to go so I got myself something pretty sturdy here a piece of wood that I found lying around the house um, I'm assuming this is big enough I'm hoping this will be big enough uh, I guess any cardboard will do as well. I'm going to, I think I will place the space lug right here. And then I'm going to make the grounds around here and I guess the, the back of it this way. I'm assuming that's a good plan as any right now. Uh, I got some duct tape here. I'm going to use duct tape to hold this guy down in place, hoping it works. Okay, seems pretty sturdy, actually sturdy enough so that uh, I can lift the whole setup by grabbing the head. Alright, I basically made a big sort of mountain around this uh, neck. And hopefully when I put like a piece of styrofoam like this around it, that will like, uh, that will push it up a bit. Here I've got some leftover different foams. I've got some insulation foam as well as uh, styrofoam. You guys know I love using styrofoam because you just can't really recycle them. So what I'm going to use is uh, these thinner pieces of styrofoam. I think it'll be perfect for layering the different uh, parts of rock on the ground. First thing I'm going to do is cut a first layer of foam where I can put it on top of this base. I'm going to do this by simply putting the base on top of the styrofoam and just drawing a quick pattern
Okay, so I pretty much know the head will fit. Now it's time to start gluing that first base piece. So first layer is done. Now time to get working on the second layer on top of this. So using the same way I made a hole before, let's say that the head will be right here. So I'm cutting the hole for the neck here and I'm trying my best to zigzag. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm trying to zigzag and I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm trying to make the same pattern that I see in the movie diorama, like on the movie set. And let's see if I can somehow try to make it look a lot more realistic just, just like it did in the movie. Alright, so I think I'm going to use a little bit of fire to round off some of these edges so that it looks a little bit more natural. And it actually also helps get rid of some of these fibers that are stuck because of the cutting uh, tool. So here goes. I'm also going to do it right on top here to make it kind of look like it's rocky, I suppose. What do you guys think? Did that help at all? Okay, so just an update. This is what I got so far done. Uh, I'm not sure if it's clear on camera, but... I'm trying to make it more rocky using my lighter here. I'm trying to add some texture to it so that it looks a little bit more rocky, but you know, I think it's a little tough <laughs> this being styrofoam that's very granular, but I think when I paint it it might look better. All right, so now I got all this leftover material and I am just basically planning to what am I doing I'm gonna put it out here somehow so that it looks like there's a canyon there All right, guys, so here's a quick update. Um, I've actually changed the, the bottom of this or the base of this to insulation foam because I ran out of uh, space for the wall. In the back here, I got to put a big asteroid wall. So what I'm going to do is use the rest of this material. I have a bunch of uh, thin foam here, and I'm going to cut strips of it. I'm going to try to uh, replicate what it looks like in the movie by putting strips of it like in a row as you can see I've cut a whole bunch and I'm just I think one more sheet should do it but uh, just really just trying to get rid of as much of this leftover foam as I can because I really don't need them okay I'm just sitting outside in nice open air to uh, try to use my heat gun here to mold these into shape. So instead of using fire, I'm just gonna use heat. Hopefully that works. So I finished my pieces and I think I should have enough to make a wall.
just to show you guys what I did here I glued them all into place and even had to glue some of these pieces together just so they kind of stick together um, and the top doesn't look as organic as I'd like but you know I don't think I'm gonna be bothered by it that much um, so now the next step would be to add a couple more pieces in here just to make it look like there's a lot of crumbled boulders and stuff okay here's a quick look at the pieces that I've glued on here um, you know I was thinking you could really put a lot of pieces here to make it look even more natural but I'm kind of getting impatient but uh, you know basically just to show you put a bunch of these random pieces here by glue um, I think looking at it from this angle should look okay uh, <clears throat> if I really want to I can always add some pieces in the future but uh, what I'm gonna do now is put a whole base coat of black on everything All right, I've pretty much used almost a whole can of this leftover spray paint, which is good. I've been trying to use that up. Uh, just trying to get the harder to reach areas as black so it looks more shadowy. I don't know if you guys can see the, the black color. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come in again with a touch up of um, acrylic paint. All right, I'm just mixing some cheap black acrylic paint here and just touching up the parts that I missed giving you guys an update on what this looks like with the black paint uh, the final color will be brownish um, I wanted to color this whole thing brown or at least uh, grayish brown uh, because that's what it looked like to me in the movie uh, and that's why I wanted the base color to be black because I wanted the darker areas to look really dark and then um, I notice here in the walls that uh, I can see through it so I'm gonna have to put some backing or maybe just some duct tape in the back there so it's coming along alright so look I've got a mixture of water um, brown paint and a little bit of green in there actually I tried to make it look a little grayish but I'm okay with this color so hopefully I don't mess this up Okay, so as I'm waiting for this to dry up, um, I'm going to be using this Millennium Falcon. This is the only Falcon I could find that's small enough. Uh, this is the Micro Machine set. I believe this was from Target for $2.99. And, uh, you know, it, this is not in scale at all. It should be like a tiny speck compared to this uh, huge space lug. But since my toddler might be playing with it, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to mount it on this uh, acrylic rod. I bought this acrylic rod uh, that's, you know, big enough but yet not too big. Uh, this is from eBay. I'll put the link in the description if you need to see it. Here it is, guys. My Space Slug Diorama. What do you guys think about this? Um, this was a very long project. This took me like three to four months. Because I got busy, you know. Uh, with life, but overall I'd say labor About 10 to 14 hours without any drying time some sometimes I would just leave it overnight of course just to let it dry um, You can see here in the back. I put just duct tape to make it um, 
so that I can't see through the, the strips of walls. And um, I wish I had different sizes strips, but this was what I had, so I wanted to just work with that. Um, now, actually, just a little disclaimer, guys, okay? Uh, when I first started this, I thought it would be a really fun summer project for me to do, like, with my kids. But I really wouldn't recommend it. At least not in the way that I was doing it. Um, and I'll tell you why, because when you make a diorama like this, um, you're heating and burning a lot of styrofoam, which causes a lot of toxic fumes. And I know there's tons of other great methods to make a diorama like this, but my main goal was to use up as much styrofoam as possible. And so I'm happy in that regard uh, that I was able to use up all my foam, or at least most of it. Another thing I want to warn anyone that uh, want to try this is if you are going to work with styrofoam, try to have the same kind of styrofoam to work with uh, because I used, I'm not kidding, like I, I had like three or four types of different styrofoams from different uh, equipments that I received um, at home and so, and they react very differently to spray paint as well as uh, glue and heat and so, you know, and I was too impatient to, to treat the whole styrofoam with Mod Podge to try to uh, protect it from all the fumes and all the heat, etc. and all the spray paint. So I wasn't about to do that. So it, it was kind of tough to adjust the way uh, it came out. But uh, just keep that in mind if you're going to try to do the same thing that I did here. But if, uh, if anyone knows of a similar falcon that's a lot smaller uh, let me know. I would love to change that to a very small falcon, but I guess I suppose for this diorama, I'm I'm happy enough with it. But uh, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this one, and I will too. And I really thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey guys, all right. So now that I am done with my presentation, I wanted to catch up whoever is still listening um, on what I have displayed uh, for my own entertainment. As you know, I, I don't have a lot of space to display. I just have one D12 case and then over here I made a shelf for all my MCU figures. That's Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's all of my Avengers figures basically. And then over here I have a small section of Mesco 112 items. Let me give you guys a look at my D12 here. Pretty much the top half is mine. Uh, this is where I display all of my 6 inch uh, scale figures. Um, I still have a lot of my 4 inch figures but they're in storage right now. Display wise I like the 6 inch figures. Uh, a mixed bag of SH figure arts, black series as well as uh, customized figures. Now the bottom half of this now belongs to my toddler. Basically a lot of the Hot Wheels and black series starships are there. And he is starting to like the 4-inch scale figures as well. Um, you know, I don't have that many for him. He's not really into it, but I'm sure it will grow and then we'll probably stack more up over here. So that's what I, that's what I have on display right now. Um, I'm missing a bunch of the Hot Wheels ones, but I'm hoping that they will come out with more. Now moving on to the top half here, as you can see, I've got one lonely uh, battle droid from the figure arts line. And then I have some clone commanders uh, and clone troopers. Uh, these are all Black Series. I can't wait for Commander Wolf. I uh, just wanted to actually mention uh, the Toy Bomb. I Thank you very much Toy Bomb for sending me that Rex. Um, I found this small retailer by the name of the Toy Bomb. Uh, they are actually an online and a physical store at the same time. And uh, they're, you know, I met them on Facebook and let me tell you, I have to recommend them because they are fantastic at service and price and uh, well most of all they're a bunch of collectors as well so I always try to support any community collectors that um, are in the business of supplying some figures to the community as well actually what's really cool about the toy bomb is that they do pretty much anything geek or pop culture uh, they do uh, pop vinyls, they do NECA, they do Marvel Legends and Black Series and you can order from them anything you can't find um, in the store or 
uh, online if you're having trouble getting it uh, maybe you're in either in your country or in your area you can always reach out to Matthew Rodden he's literally the, the people running that store is Matthew Rodden his wife and maybe some more some more family members but it's a very small operation so they're able to get back to you very quickly now unfortunately uh, I'm not gonna be able to give you a discount code because this is not a sponsorship channel uh, you know I'm not sponsored by them I'm just uh, mentioning a store that I really like doing business with so be sure to check them out uh, you know they're they're very very helpful and I guess you could mention hey the budget jet I sent me see if you can get on the priority list if you're looking for a figure that's hard to find ask them when they'll get it in and maybe they can put you on the priority list so uh, feel free to do that now here's some more Siths and Jedis I'm not sure how many Black Series Siths and Jedis are coming out but right now I have three uh, and I have some bounty hunters right here can't wait for more to come out from the Black Series and then on the very top is just my so-called uh, good guys action figures and again they're a mixed bag of figure arts black series and some are black series but customized like the Leia and Han there they have customized phases Han I believe is from Casting Cave and uh, Leia is from Old Boy CTTS and I think I've shown you guys my Bandai kit R2D2 and C3PO before Moving on to my MCU shelf. I really love this shelf right now. Um, I hope you guys have all seen the Infinity War. Uh, I love the figures that come out from Hasbro and I really love the movie as well. I can't wait to see the second Infinity War. Uh, so some of these I've gotten from Toys, Toys R Us, you know, from Target, some from Walmart and I believe some from the Toy Bomb as well, like that new uh, Black Widow, as well as uh, the Ant-Man and Wasp. So again, thank you uh, Toy Bomb. You know what I love about the Toy Bomb is their price. Um, you know, you've seen some bigger store names, they mark up uh, retail prices, especially if the item's kind of harder to find. You'll, they'll, you'll see them at like 5 to $10 more expensive. Uh, that has not been the case so far with the Toy Bomb. So uh, make sure you uh, let me know what you find with them. Finally, I've got my Mesco 112 shelf here. Uh, a lot of these I've gotten from different uh, suppliers. Uh, one of them being the Toy Bomb. They also sell these figures. Uh, Mesco 112 is sort of a high-end line, you know. They average like 80 bucks each, so they're not cheap um, and I don't really get too many of them uh, but I do get the ones that fit with my armory diorama so I really enjoy them because I rotate them through my diorama and the last two that you see here are customized I actually made them myself so I'm gonna take time to show off these figures you know these are uh, the Wesley Snipes movie blade as well as the Warzone Punisher starring Ray Stevenson but basically all figures that match with my armory diorama I like. Anyway guys, thanks for listening to my ramble. I'll see you next time. I want to take this one. I want to take this one. You want to take that one? You can just pull it off. Just pull it off. Pull it hold off. on, hold on sweetheart. Oh. Okay, here, pull it. There's a little glue on it. Take the glue off. All right. Is that better? Shh. You're going to get it in, in, in the rock. Da, 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 da. It got out of here. What happened? It, 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 it's in his mouth. He's eating it? Yes. That's scary. Is he going to make it? Yes. Chomp, chomp. He got out of his mouth.